Well, hello everybody, and thank you for uh, for coming over to my presentation. Uh, my name is uh, Damon Bear, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you uh, a little bit about uh, operations and automation and, and efficiency, and how you can do things more easily and more efficiently with uh, the, the CLI as opposed to using the vSphere client. So first, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a senior solutions uh, architect for uh, Scalar Decisions. Uh, uh, I'm based out of uh, Canada. I am uh, a double uh, VC uh, AP, as well as a V expert and a V expert NSX. And I'm also the uh, VMUG leader of uh, Toronto, and I used to be the VMUG leader for Vancouver as well. Another thing about me is I've uh, uh, written a book called uh, Designing Risk in IT Infrastructure. It's uh, part of a, uh, an IT uh, uh, architect series uh, written by uh, uh, other, other people in the, uh, the community, uh, a number of VCDXs. Um, excellent series. Uh, it's actually over in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, the VMware bookstore. Go in and uh, in check it out. Or uh, have a look at uh, designingrisk.com or itaseries.com. So, uh, th this is uh, an overview of what I'm going to talk about today. I've got a lot of slides, so I'm going to try to pack in as much as possible, um, and uh, hopefully I can fit everything into the uh, 30 minutes that I have. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, all of the different CLIs um, in the um, uh, vSphere environment. Uh, we'll talk about uh, host-based CLIs, uh, data center CLIs, uh, power CLI, uh, RVC, and all the different ways that you can use these different CLIs and why you would want to use one versus another. So the, the first thing that you need to think of is um, uh, why would we want to use a, a CLI versus a, a web client and, and what is it actually providing that's, that's any different? And you can kind of think of it as this. Um, doesn't really matter what you use. Everything is communicating with the uh, with the uh, the APIs for for vCenter. Where you're, whether you're communicating with the the, the hosts or with uh, uh, vCenter itself, it's all communicating through the APIs. Now, when you uh, use a, a web client or you know the legacy client or whatever HTML5 client, that's basically abstracting uh, the commands that you use to communicate with uh, with the APIs. So with the the various CLIs. You, you have a different contexts that or contexts that you can use to uh, access the APIs, and they're they're used for a number of, of different uh, things, which I'll get into uh, shortly. Uh, first, uh, a vCLI uh, has access over to a, a number of different uh, interfaces. You have um, a VICFG, which I'll, I'll, all these different ones I'll talk to you about uh, later on. I'll describe what they are. You have ESXCLI, uh, DCLI and a number of other ones as well. Um, that communicates over with the, the APIs. You also have Power CLI, which can also communicate directly with the, with the ACLIs. You have the DCLI in uh, vCenter server, and that allows you to communicate with the host through the APIs as well. So there's a lot of different types of uh, CLIs that you can access. So the way that you can really break it down to determine why you'd want to use one versus another is uh, these three questions, and you have to think about what do you actually need to do. Um, so the first one is, uh, uh, is it urgent and do you need simplicity? That's uh, operations, you need to get something done right away, and you want to do it as easy as, as possible. Next, does it affect a large number of, of objects? Uh, if you use the, uh, the web client, then you can do things, you can do everything that you need to do, but if you're doing it to a large number of uh, objects, it's going to take a very, very long time to do that. So in that instance, uh, using um, the, um, the, the GUI for it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And the last one is, does it need to be repeatable and have variables? This is where you start tying into things such as uh, automation and, and doing scripting and doing things in such a manner that you can create uh, code snippets and then use that as part of your uh, uh, automation strategy. So if you look at this workflow, I've divided it into two basic areas. You have uh, an operations uh, area and then you have an automation area. So first I'm going to talk about operations and day-to-day uh, -day operations that you would use 
a one-time code for, or basically the, the code that, that you memorize, you don't have to look up, and you just know how to do and become comfortable with that, that for your daily operations. So the two most common CLIs that are used in the vSphere environment are the uh, ESX CLI and the uh, DC UI, or the, um, uh, the Direct Console User Interface. So the Direct Console User Interface is what you get when you uh, plug a keyboard and a monitor into your ESXi server. Um, but that's not the only way that you can access it. You can actually SSH into the server itself and then type in DCUI and you get the same interface um, in, in a text console through an SSH session. So that's really handy to do uh, if you need to access that interface and have a, a familiar way of, of doing actions that, that you need to do. The DCUI is very simple in what it does, but it does it very effectively. So some things that you would use the DCUI for are to uh, change the host password, uh, configure your management VM kernels, your, your VLANs, um, or configuring your uplinks for your vNetwork standard switch. Now, it's very important that I said vNetwork standard switch as opposed to vNetwork distributed switch, because through the DCUI, you have no means of accessing um, the distributed switch configuration. And actually, if you have your interfaces set up on a distributed switch and you go and you make modifications in the DCUI, you, you will remove it from the distributed switch and put it onto the standard switch. But from a troubleshooting scenario, from an initial uh, provisioning uh, uh, scenario, the DCUI is, is a very handy uh, uh, console to, uh, to, to use. One other thing that the DCUI is, is very good at, which you can't do with uh, some of the other interfaces, is if you have a number of different uplinks and you need to determine uh, how they're actually enumerated in the, uh, um, in the host, then you can plug in a cable and then you can go into the DCUI and you can look to see what has been connected and what is the, the VM NIC that has been uh, enumerated over to that specific uplink. Oftentimes, if you have uh, a, a number of, of different uplinks, they won't necessarily enumerate exactly the same. So even if you have two hosts that, that are uh, identical, um, they may not have the exact same uh, VM NICs uh, enumerated to the, uh, to the uplinks. So this is one way that you can use in order to verify uh, which uplinks go with, uh, with which interface. Now the ESX CLI is the, the, the greatest uh, interface that you're really going to see on, uh, on the, the vSphere um, uh, environment because it is, it is so vast, you can do an incredible amount of things. I'd say probably about um, 85 to 90% of all the things that you need to do uh, or want to do on um, uh, vSphere, you're able to do through the ESX uh, CLI. And you can access the uh, ESX CLI through a couple of different means. One uh, means is if you were to uh, um, access the ESX uh, shell on the host, so you can do that through the um, uh, the direct attach interface itself, if you have a keyboard and a monitor hooked up, then you can hit control alt um, uh, F1 and then that will bring up the shell, you can log in and then that gives you access over to that. Or you can SSH in as well and then that also gives you access over to it. Or another means that you can access it is by using the, uh, the vCLI package. So you can uh, run all your ESX CLI commands uh, remotely from a workstation without actually logging in uh, directly to it. So as of Oh, I lost, uh, oh, there we go, oh, okay. As of um, vSphere 6.7, there are 15 namespaces um, that are available in ESX uh, CLI. And uh, I'm gonna go through each one of those just to show you the, uh, the vast tree and depth of the functions that, that you can do with each one of those namespaces. Um, so with the, the device namespace, you're able to uh, look at the hardware information that's associated with the, the VMNX, the VMHPAs, uh, the ESX CLI, that will uh, allow you to provide uh, uh, information on all the available namespaces. So that's really good if it, that's like your, your help, essentially. Uh, you have uh, an FCOE namespace, so you can uh, query your fiber channel adapters. Um, a graphics namespace, an RDMA namespace, Hardware, you have a lot of uh, different um, name or uh, trees within this namespace that you can access. So you can really get a lot of, of information by uh, using the uh, the hardware namespace. iSCSI that also has a, a lot of uh, uh, parameters that are available to it. But I'll show you some of the the interesting ones. Network, you can see that there's an incredible amount 
of things that you can do on, on the, the network side. So it's, it's really uh, quite vast, very powerful. Um, but I'll show you some other interesting ones as well. Uh, NVMe uh, as well. So if you want to uh, get information about uh, uh, the latest generation of flash drives, um, you can do a lot of functions with that. It really gives you a lot of power. Uh, RDMA, scheduler. Uh, software is an interesting one because if, if you are going to do any um, uh, updates and you want to install some packages, your, your VIBs, software is the one that, that you would want to do. So it would be like um, uh, the uh, software VIB uh, install or you can do an update. Then that's, that's the namespace that, that you'd want to use. Uh, for the VMs, you can uh, 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 query your VMs. You can start and stop them. You can do a number of different functions to them. Now storage. Again, you have an incredible amount of uh, parameters that you can work with on, on, the, on the storage side. And system, vSAN, again, a lot you can do. So uh, vSAN is, is actually a, a separate one from storage that gives you a lot of uh, functionality. So if you look at it, these are all the different namespaces they have together. It almost looks like a, like a brain. It's... Uh, it's uh, incredible amount of functionality that you can do through this one uh, interface. So ESX CLI, if you're not familiar with it, uh, start uh, working with it, um, and you can really use it for just about everything. So now I'll start delving to some of the other uh, CLIs that you may not be as familiar with. Now, the, the first few are, are ones that, that you use for your daily operations. So if you want to delve a little bit deeper and start getting things like a detailed statistics or information or you're doing some troubleshooting, these are the different um, interfaces that, that you would want to use for that. And uh, one of them is the, um, uh, the Ruby vSphere console, um, ESX top, um, as well as um, um, uh, packet capture dash uh, UW. It allows you to do some packet captures as well. So I'll, I'll delve into each one of those and I'll talk about those for, for a bit. So the, uh, the Ruby vSphere console uh, allows you to get uh, a lot of detailed information on different things, but what uh, at least I find it's primarily used for is, is getting detailed information about um, uh, vSAN. So it's, it's a really good troubleshooting tool to get uh, information about vSAN that you can't get using uh, other, uh, other CLIs or other interfaces uh, itself. So in order to access the, the RVC, you, would, uh, you could uh, SSH over to uh, a vCSA server, and uh, then uh, from there, you would want to uh, log into the, the vCenter server with your creden credentials. Even though you already are on the vCenter server, you have to log in one more time with uh, the, the RVC. Uh, once you do that, the, um, uh, the namespaces that are used are, are based on, on a path basis. So you need to go to the specific path that you want to access, and then you can run the command uh, from there. So this, this is a simple command that uh, you won't want to run against uh, vSAN to, to check the, the state of this. So as you can see in the, in the graphic, um, it's uh, running the... Um, uh, the vSAN check state against the, uh, the, the cluster contacts, and it's showing if there's any uh, objects that are, that are inaccessible, um, if there's any issues with, with vSAN. Um, this is just a, a very simple overview, but if you, want, if you work with vSAN and um, you, know, you, you work with uh, a vSAN observer, vROPS, and so on, those are all great, but this can delve in a lot, a lot deeper than, than those and very quickly as well. Uh, ESX Top is the, the primary troubleshooting tool that, that you'll use uh, once you, you, de you determine you want to get some more information on, on your environment or you're having an issue with uh, a contention or you're working with, with uh, um, VMware support to determine what's going on with your environment. So there's a number of areas that you can work within um, uh, ESX Top to get um, uh, your information. So I'm just going to quickly go through each one of these, and then I'll, I'll show you something neat at the end that you can do with ESX Top that you may have not known that you could do before. So um, you can get some statistics on, on the network, uh, on the CPU, the disk, uh, NUMA, memory, as well as vSAN as well. But this is the, the, the one area that I think is, is really neat, which uh, is 
is not talked about a, a lot, where I haven't heard a lot about it before I started doing uh, research and working with it myself, um, is that you can actually get ESX Top 2 uh, to go into replay mode. So you can capture all of the, the, the data over a period of time, and then you can go back to it later on and then see what actually happened during, during that period of time. So this is really good if you um, are experiencing uh, an issue or you want to see how something responds and you want to get all the data from uh, ESX Top uh, so that you can look at it later and do some correlation between events that you may know th uh, that, are, that are happening uh, as well as what you're actually seeing in, in ESX Top. So yeah, to start ESX top in um, a replay mode is simply uh, ESX top uh, minus R, um, and uh, then uh, you'd uh, play the uh, the uh, extracted uh, content file name that you have from there, and then you can uh, start up uh, replay mode. So we've we've looked at the day-to-day -day operations, and then we've looked at going into a little bit deeper, getting some statistics, some troubleshooting. Now these last interfaces that I'm going to talk about on the one-time code operation side, these are ones that you don't see very often and you usually encounter these if you're working with um, uh, global support and something has really broken badly in your environment. These are, are commands that uh, they're kind of like a, like a back channel in order to get some uh, statistics and information and do things to your environment to get it back up and running when things have really broken. So the first one I'll talk about is uh, a vSish. So uh, vSish will uh, allow you to get some um, very, very detailed uh, information on, uh, on your environment. Um, you can get some uh, uh, information. Well, there's a number of different contexts that you can uh, look at. One of the con contexts is, is called uh, config, which will allow you to look at uh, all the, the detailed or advanced configuration parameters of your, uh, of your objects within um, your, uh, your vCenter environment. So that's a very handy one uh, to use if you, if you want to get that and then um, um, uh, export that so you can, you can look at that. So if, if you want to get this information and uh, fix things as quickly as possible, this is a very a good tool to have in, in your tool belt. Uh, however, that being said, um, these tools are usually not recommended by um, uh, VMware support to use unless you're asked to. So if you have an environment that you're fairly comfortable, you take full ownership of it or it's not production, go ahead and, and use these, these tools. However, if you're not uh, familiar or comfortable enough with, with, uh, with these tools, don't do it in your production environment. Uh, another very useful command, um, which is similar to ESX CLI, is called uh, local CLI. Now the ESX CLI needs the uh, uh, the, the host D daemon in, in to, to uh, run in order to actually access it. So if host D is down for whatever reason and, and you can't access it, or you can't bring, bring it up for whatever your circumstances are, you can still run uh, a lot of the same commands through the, the local CLI. So the, the same syntax can, can be used in order to do that, and then it'll do it directly on, on the host, bypassing the, the, the host D. Um, however, you know, again, Warning at the bottom, if you uh, do this on your own, there's a, a good chance that it may go into an inconsistent state, causing all kinds of issues if you don't know what you're doing. So uh, break things in dev so that uh, you, know, you know what you're doing in, in prod. Um, the, the last utility of this set is the, uh, um, the packet capture uh, utility. So um, the packet cap UW, uh, allows you to uh, capture statistics um, and uh, or um, packets from every single um, part of, of your environment. So you can really drill down into filters such as uh, uh, VMs, uplinks, interfaces, uh, so on. So it's it's a lot more in depth and specific to uh, VMware and uh, all the, the different uh, objects and, and, and uh, components of it then you would get instead of just using like a TCP dump. So you can really use it to uh, drill down and to filter into all these different areas. Um, these are just some of the different uh, arguments that you can uh, use uh, against them. I won't go into those too much for the sake of time. But um, one neat thing that you can do with this is you can export over to a PCAP so that you can then use uh, tools such as uh, uh, Wireshark in order to uh, 
um, replay the, um, the, the packet flow in and look at what's actually going on and, and, and delve into it a bit more. So that's the, the one-time code side. Now, if we look at the repeatable code side, you'll see that there's some overlap between automation and operations. And both of these have the ability to have a repeatable code, and they, they point down over to different CLIs that, that are available. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is uh, Power CLI. So Power CLI is incredibly powerful, and if you've been sitting over here for a few different sessions, you've heard some of the other great things that you can do with Power CLI. Um, I, I would strongly say that it's probably the most powerful uh, command line uh, platform or utility or whatever you want to call it that, that's currently available. You can do uh, uh, an immeasurable amount with it. Now this is uh, a reference poster that shows uh, all the different commands and contexts. Uh, if, you, if you want to get a copy of this poster, just uh, have, have a look or do a search on, on Google for the, uh, the Power CLI um, uh, reference poster and then uh, you can get a copy of that. And um, if you can find some of the uh, uh, some of the guys around here that uh, uh, manage that, uh, that, that BU, you can actually uh, perhaps get a full-size poster from them. So keep, uh, keep your eye out for, uh, uh, for those guys. So there's PowerCLI and there's PowerCLI Core. PowerCLI has always been a great tool, but one of the problems with it is that it's been Windows only. You had to use a PowerShell and you had to have a Windows uh, box in order to, to do all this stuff. So in, in the same way that um, uh, a vCenter used to rely on Windows before it switched over to vCSA, the same kind of thing is happening with, with PowerShell uh, as well. Now you have uh, PowerCLI Core, which is available. So uh, a lot of the same things that you can do with uh, uh, PowerCLI, you can do, now do on other operating systems, whether it's uh, uh, Linux or you know, you're running on Docker instance or you're running from, from your Mac, you're able to, uh, to use PowerCLI Core. So these are some of the differences that you'll see in between PowerCLI and PowerCLI Core. Um, PowerCLI Core will allow you to do the vast majority of the things that you need to do uh, from a, a regular uh, operational day-to-day -day thing. However, if you really want to delve in deep and use um, you know, PowerCLI for a lot more than, than just that, um, then that's where you're going to uh, want to use the PowerCLI for, for Windows. So really that's, that's the, the, the division of the operations versus the, the automation. You have a lot more on, on the Windows side. Um, but PowerCLI Core hasn't been around for, for very long at all. Um, currently there's only 280 commandlets out for it. PowerCLI there's about 600 or so. Uh, but you'll see that that's going to change over, over time. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know, it becomes like a, a unified um, uh, 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 power CLI uh, core that you can run across all, all your different operating systems, including Windows, that, uh, that uh, do it. Maybe they'll call it uh, power CLI T or something like that. I don't know. Um, so it's, it's very easy to install uh, power CLI, but one of the things that you need to, to know after you first install it is that you have to set, set this one command. You have to uh, set the, uh, the uh, execution policy to remote signed. After you do that, you can actually do things, otherwise it's going to generate a bunch of errors. Um, then from there, you'd want to connect over to, the, um, to your vCenter server, uh, enter in your, your credentials. And uh, then from there, you can do a number of, of different things. Of course, you can script things out, or you, know, you can enter it in manually to do things in, in, in a one-off basis. Um, I, I strongly suggest that you um, uh, look at the, uh, at the code libraries that are available. There's lots of different sample code that you can use and modify and configure so that you can use that for your own specific purposes. Now, this one example over here, um, it's a little bit cut off in the, in the top over there, but this example, um, it, it's, it's a code that will allow you to uh, migrate a virtual machine from uh, one vCenter over to a completely separate vCenter as well. So it's, it's uh, you know, very simple to, to do this with uh, a power CLI. You simply connect over to your uh, vCenter server. You um, then uh, connect over to the, 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 the destination. You specify the, uh, the virtual machines that, uh, the, that you want to uh, uh, use uh, for this command. And then you, uh, you set over to, to migrate. So it's a four-step process in order to, to do that. But if you have a script that com uh, compiles all the stuff into uh, usable code, 
then you're able to do this very, very efficiently without going through the, uh, uh, the, the web interface at all. Another example is if you want to set um, a, a DRS rule. So if you're going to do this through the, uh, th through the web client, uh, then you'd have to go over to the, you know, the, 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 your specific cluster, you'd have to go over to the uh, advanced settings, and then over to the, the VM section, and then set your affinities. So there's uh, at least, I'd say like six or seven clicks that you have to do in order to, to get to that one point. Um, you know, that's not even including the amount of time it takes to, uh, to log in, and, you know, depending on, on what version of the web client you're using. Some of the uh, 6.0 versions are very, very slow. Um, you know, the, the newer ones are, are a lot easier to, to go through, but if you're using um, you know, the, the, the old legacy web, web client, it's going to take forever to do. However, if you're using PowerCLI, this only takes a couple seconds. It's just uh, three, uh, three lines over here to, to do that, so very, very simple. Um, so some of the other things that, that you can use or the other interfaces that you can use uh, are the, the DCLI, uh, ESX uh, CFG, and the uh, VCLI. And I'll talk a little bit about the, the ESX CFG, um, which is actually a deprecated interface, but it's been changed over to something else, which I'll, I'll discuss in a second. But before I get into that, first I want to mention the, the vSphere Management uh, Assistant. What this is is uh, uh, a Linux VM that gets deployed and connects over to your vCenter server and all your hosts, and you're able to run uh, commands on it that uh, span the, uh, the, the entire um, uh, environment. So it's not connected over to just a single host or just to the vCenter, it connects over to everything. So you, you, can, you can use this to do a lot of different things. And for a long time, this was the only way that you could really uh, do things and, and you would run your, your scripts and your code on the VMA. However, as of uh, 6.5, uh, the VMA is, is end of life, so you're not going to see the VMA uh, anymore. Um, what you will be able to do is all the things that you could do um, in, in the VMA, you're able to do through the, the VCLI and, and the, the DCLI uh, as well. So, <clears throat> so the, the VCLI is uh, a, package that, a package that you install on your uh, uh, workstation that uh, uh, connects over to, to your environment in a very similar way that the, uh, the VMA worked in the past. Um, now, if you remember in the, the first image that I showed, it showed all of those different uh, interfaces that you could use, the ESX CLI, the, the DCLI, the VICFG, all of that's accessible through the VCLI. So this is your one-stop shop for everything that you need to do in your, your vSphere environment. Once you, you download this package, you can use it for doing everything that you, that you need to do. So you know, just to, to, to recap, you're able to access each one of those interfaces individually, depending on what you're doing, or you can use this as your platform to do everything possible. So uh, ESX CFG has been around for, for forever. A lot of the things that you could do with uh, ESX CFG have been moved over to ESX CLI, so that's the preferred way of doing things on on the host. However, um, ESX CFG was very, very powerful, and uh, there was a lot of scripts that were created in order to, to make use of that. So if you have scripts that are, are making use of ESX CFG, you can simply uh, swap out ESX CFG for VI CFG and run that from your uh, VCLI workstation, and the syntax is exactly the same, so you can run it in the exact same uh, manner. So you don't have to throw out your old um, ESX CFG uh, scripts. So the, the DCLI is um, really interesting because it connects into the, um, uh, the uh, vSphere automation uh, APIs uh, in your environment. Uh, the DCLI is, is something that you can use to, to manage your, your, your VMs, uh, VMC on AWS uh, environment as well as your, your vCenter environment. Um, it's, it's very, very powerful. So you can access the DCLI through uh, a couple of different means. One of them is to log on to um, your, your vCenter uh, uh, server appliance, and you can run DCLI commands directly from there. Um, or you're able to um, uh, access it through the vCLI package uh, as well. Now, the, the last part over here that, that, that I want to talk about is uh, Onyx. 
So uh, just going back a, a little ways, if, if, if you remember the first iteration of, of Onyx, what it was was a fling that you could use so that when you're using your, your old legacy vSphere client, it would act as an in-between and it would determine the, the, the calls that it's making over to the um, vSphere APIs and then it would take those and then and it would turn those into scripts that you could run um, in, um, in uh, a PowerShell. However, the, the problem with that was that it wasn't reusable code. It was, it was very strange code that you couldn't really use. Just one second. Um, so now, uh, Onyx has been made available for the, for the web client, and it's, it's uh, a lot better than, than it was in the past. You're able to generate code that's actually reusable. And now, uh, it just announced like a, a couple of days ago, um, the new version of um, Onyx, which is called Code Capture, has been released as, as a fling in the, the new HTML5 client. So to deploy the new HTML5 client, you, you download the, the OVA, you deploy it, make sure that you select the, the second uh, dropdown, not the first, in order to get the, the OVA. And this is an example of what, it, uh, what you can do with the uh, HTML client. It has code capture built into it right away, so you're able to simply hit record, do an action in your uh, vSphere client. Uh, once that action is done, then you hit stop, and automatically, there's your code. As simple as that. Then you can take that code, it's reusable, um, you know, you can, you can do a lot of stuff with this. So it's, it's really, really quite powerful. So I've run out of time, but uh, thank you very much. Um, if you want to uh, uh, reach me, uh, you can uh, follow me on, uh, on Twitter at, uh, at Damon Bear. Uh, you can go to the website designingrisk.com. Uh, I'm also doing a book signing over at uh, 4 o'clock at the uh, VMware store. Thank you very much.